Yo, what's up guys? Uh, it's Noah here, and in today's video, we're going to take a first look at the Week 3 NFL slate on DraftKings and Yahoo. Uh, we're going to break down this slate position by position, and something new that I'm going to start doing, uh, I am going to start building out a first look lineup. I know this is something that you know a lot of people around the industry do. Uh, Smiz is one of the guys that kind of you know started off the first look videos, and then a lot of other DFS guys, including myself, have kind of know piggybacked off him and also started doing first look videos i really do enjoy making these videos though because they help me personally you know while also getting out more content they do help me you know kind of figure out who i'm going to be playing come sunday you know i don't want to just pull up the slate friday night or saturday night and that'd be my first looks of the slate i do like you know making first look videos getting an idea of you know what matchups we're going to be targeting who we're going to be playing you know as the week goes on i can always update my plays and update my content throughout the week but these first look videos they help me as well as you know getting out more content for you guys as always you know i upload these at the beginning of the week i usually put them out uh tuesday morning i upload them monday night that's when i'm recording or the, i, I uh, post them or i record them monday night post them on youtube tuesday morning and recording this video late monday night gonna post it you know tuesday morning on youtube uh, as always i will you know provide more content throughout the week i will be getting out my showdown video uh, for the thursday night football game That'll probably go out Wednesday morning, and then my full slate breakdown, my updated thoughts on the slate, that will go up Friday morning. So I'm still providing a, up, a lot of updated content throughout the week, but I do enjoy getting out these first look videos. We're going to break down the slate position by position. As we go, you know, we'll build out an early look lineup, more of a cash game based lineup, you know, really looking to target guys with high floors, you know, receivers that are getting a lot of targets, running backs that are getting a lot of touches. You know, we'll try and touch on some guys I maybe like for tournaments that could be low owned, but this will mainly be, you know, talking about cash games, optimal plays, uh, you know, guys that really stand out just volume based at each position. So before we do get started, guys, as always, would appreciate it if you would hit that like button down below. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel as well if you are new here. Um, I'm uploading a ton of NFL content throughout the week. I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. Be sure to click that notification bell as well. Uh, so that way you do get notified every time I upload. You'll never miss out on any of my new videos. And if you would like, I do have more content available on Patreon. That is linked down below in the description if you want to check that out. You know, it's obviously optional, but if you want to get more content from me, if you really enjoy the stuff that I put out on YouTube, you know, I do have stuff available on Patreon that you can check out linked down below. But let's go ahead and take a first look um, at this week three slate. So obviously, you know, before I started recording this video, I did take a quick glance at the slate. You know, I'm, I built out the early look lineup before I started recording, but we'll talk through the process of how I got to the lineup. You know, this is not a lineup for you guys to play. I don't give out lineups. That's not what I do here. Uh, but I do like, you know, talking through the process of how I build my lineups, what I'm looking for in terms of, you know, running backs, matchup wise, uh, touches wise, receivers, same thing. You know, I'm looking for receivers with large volume, a lot of targets. Uh, so we'll definitely talk through that. But let's start off at quarterback. I think this is a week where we probably will be able to pay up even in cash games if you know if you normally or normally me I don't like paying up at quarterback for cash games I want to try and pay up uh, for those expensive running backs that high that get you know a large amount of touches those expensive receivers that get a lot a large amount of targets but this week you know we have a lot of injuries a lot of guys are out uh, Christian McCaffrey a guy I normally always look to pay up for he's going to be out this week uh, um, uh, George Kittle's questionable but that's not really notable but like Julio, he's listed as questionable. I assume he plays, though. But really, like, we don't have McCaffrey. You know, there's some other guys that I think might be out this week. Like, I know Barkley's out, but he's not on the main slate, so I guess we don't really need to touch on that. Or they, he is on the main slate that just uh, bumped his price way down. So, like, we don't have to worry about trying to pay up for Barkley or McCaffrey because uh, they're going to be out this week. So I think we can pay up for quarterback, and there are some good options at the top here. Russell Wilson and Dak Prescott definitely stand out at the top for me. Uh, right now, this game does have the highest total on the slate. I assume this is going to be a game we definitely want to target between the Cowboys and the Seahawks. I think right now it has like a 54.5 total. Should see a lot of points scored here. Both these guys have been great for fantasy. I mean, Russell Wilson, in my opinion, he's been the best quarterback in the league so far. Been elite for, for DFS. 34 DraftKings points in both of his two games. Had a really good matchup week one against the Falcons. Did really well. And even in a tough spot Sunday night against a really good Patriots defense, Still put up 34 DraftKings points, been incredibly efficient, completing 75% of his passes or better, uh, four touchdowns in week one, five touchdowns in week two. Like Russell Wilson normally was not a guy that I'd love paying up for just because the Seahawks don't really throw the ball a ton, 
but they're throwing the ball a lot more this year. They're letting Russell Wilson go out there and just you know do what he does best, and that's getting the ball downfield, being an excellent quarterback. I mean, Russell Wilson, in my opinion, is, I mean, I think he might be better than Lamar right now. He's just so good. I mean, the dude's just so efficient, incredibly, you know, doesn't make mistakes at all either, rarely throws interceptions. He's a great scrambler as well, can, you know, make plays with his legs. I really like Russell Wilson here. You know, I think he's probably the quarterback I'm going to try and pay up for this week. Dak Prescott on the other side, you could definitely look to. Uh, Dak was disappointing week one against the Rams, but really had a strong game last week. You know, he threw for 450 yards. You kind of got lucky with him getting three rushing touchdowns. You know, all of his three rushing touchdowns came at the goal line. Uh, They gave him, or he got a read option where he kept it himself, got a touchdown, a rushing touchdown there. And then his other two rushing touchdowns, you know, came with uh, quarterback sneaks at the one. I would say like 75, 80% of the time, you know, when the Cowboys are getting to the goal line, they're just going to hand it off to Zeke. So it was kind of, or you did get kind of lucky with Dak getting those three rushing TDs. You know, you take those three TDs away, he finishes with like 25 DK points, which is still good, but kind of ran good to get 43 out of him last game. Still a really strong option this week. You know, I think him and Russ just look like the two clear options to pay up for. You know, Josh Allen's been great, but like as an optimal play, He's not someone I feel like I want to try and pay up for in turn or in, in cash games. Like against the Rams, not the best spot overall. You know, Allen still has upside. Even Kyler Murray, I think, could be viable as a pay up option. You know, he's if I was going to play someone in cash, it would but not name Russ or not name Prescott. It would probably be Kyler Murray over guys like Cam or uh, Matt Ryan. I mean, Kyler Murray just been so good as well. An incredibly you know good fantasy QB has great scrambling upside. Can get rushing yards. 91 rushing yards week one, 67 week two, 33 and 27 drafting points so far through two games. You know, this Lions defense, I'm not really worried about. Uh, They just got cooked by the Packers last week. I mean, this team, you know, we shouldn't be worried too much about matchup here. So I think Kyler looks pretty good as well at 6,800. You know, Big Ben at home against the Texans, I think could be viable. I don't know if I want to spend 6,400 for him though in cash games. You know, I think I'd probably just try and get up to Russ or Prescott because I think those are our you know, two uh, clear top options this week. You know, there's some, you know, guys we could maybe consider here for tournaments. I don't know if these are going to be like optimal cash game plays though. Like Mitchell Trubisky, I was actually on last week and I'm probably going to be on him again this week. 5,700 against the Falcons. I like that matchup a lot. You know, he was really good in the first half. I think he had like 14 DraftKings points or 13 DraftKings points in the first half last week against the Giants and then managed to score just two fantasy points in the second half only finished with 15 so I mean we could add a way better game from Jabisky last week I like the matchup you know as a cheap option he could definitely be viable at 5700 even Baker Mayfield facing Washington for 5700 that could be a cheap option you go to as well but not much else stands out you know below 6k not a ton of value this week you know Teddy Bridgewater's cheap but I don't love picking on that Chargers team they have a really good defense not really a spot I want to attack So really, like, if you're going cheap, I think it's Trubisky and Mayfield for me under 6K. Uh, Justin Herbert looked great last week, gets a really good matchup against the Panthers, assuming he starts again. I mean, they came out and said that Tyler or Tyrod Taylor is going to be their starter if he's healthy. I don't know if that's going to be the case, though. Like, we'll have to see if that's actually true. With how well Herbert played last week, with them almost beating the Chiefs, I mean, you'd have to assume he's going to get another opportunity here against the Panthers. I assume he starts again, so... He could definitely be a value option, 5,900. This Panthers defense, incredibly bad. Uh, Probably going to be the worst in the league. Definitely going to be a team we want to attack. But I think for me, you know, if I'm looking to get my exposure to the Chargers this week, which I definitely want to, it's probably going to come from the running game. Really like Austin Eckler. He was a guy that really stood out to me, you know, when I first looked at the slate uh, before I started recording this video. So, yeah, I think with how many, you know, mid-range, strong mid-range options we're going to talk about, there's a lot of strong mid-range plays at running back. You know, even receiver, there's some underpriced receivers this week. We have some value with all these injuries, you know, with Christian McCaffrey out, with Saquon Barkley out, uh, the 49ers also missing two of their starting running backs. It looks like both Raheem Oster and uh, T- Tariq Col- or Tevin Coleman, excuse me, are going to be out this week, so we got some value there. We definitely can pay up for quarterback, and bet- for me, it's between Russ or Prescott, I think I prefer Russ just because I think he gives you a little bit more upside and a little bit of a safer floor. I mean, this game's just, it should be a shootout, honestly. It should be a close game as well. It's going to be a great game to target for DFS. I think I do want to start my lineups with one of those two quarterbacks. And for now, it's going to be Russ for me. On Yahoo, it's kind of similar. You know, 
Russ and uh, Dak aren't as expensive over there either. You know, Josh Allen's the same price as Russell Wilson. Kyler Murray is actually the most expensive quarterback on Yahoo. Prescott, only $34, looks really good. You know, I think if you want to go to Prescott at 34 you can. But we'll just plug in Russ on Yahoo as well because he's the quarterback that, for now, I really like the most and just the guy that stood out to me the most when I looked at the position. So we'll move on to running back now. So at the running back position, at the top, you know, there's definitely some viable plays at the top here. You have Zeke in that high total game, 8,300 on DK. I mean, I played Zeke last week. He was one of my highest owned players. Um, I know he was really popular, but I just love the matchup so much against the Falcons. Looking back on it, he could have had a way better game. You know, as I said at the beginning of the video, Dak Prescott got three goal line touchdowns. I mean, even if one of those goes to goes to Zeke, I mean, he's going to finish with close to 30 drafting points. He got 28 touches, 22 carries for 89 yards, seven targets, six catches for 33 yards. I mean, Zeke is going to be a workhorse back once again this year, probably going to get anywhere from 25 to 30 touches again. I think at 8,300, if I'm going to pay up at running back, you know, without McCaffrey on the board, without Saquon on the board, it's close between Zeke or Derrick Henry for me. Derrick Henry, I played last week as well, and God, it was so disappointing to see him only finish with 8.4 DK points in a game where, you know, the Titans put up 33 points and Derrick Henry only had eight draftings points. I mean, how often does that happen? Normally, if the Titans are putting up, you know, four or five touchdowns, it's very likely that Derrick Henry is going to have at least one, if not two of those touchdowns. We ran we ran really bad with Henry only getting eight fantasy points last week. He should bounce back in a big way here. This Vikings defense has just looked so bad this season. I don't expect them to be a team we really want to be afraid of. The Vikings are definitely going to be a team we want to attack. So Derrick Henry looks good. I mean, Dalvin Cook as well feels a little bit too cheap at 7,600. Josh Jacobs against the Patriots, I probably won't be going there, especially not in cash games. Uh, Jonathan Taylor was like massive chalk last week. He was a fantastic play. He got priced up to 7K this week, but he once again looks like a really strong option. Got 28 uh, touches last week, had 20 touches at the end of halftime. I mean, it was looking like he was just going to absolutely crush. Kind of cooled off in the second half, but still finished with 22 DK points, had over 100 rushing yards. Just got so much volume. You know, it was clear they were just going to keep giving the ball to Jonathan Taylor. And here at home against the Jets as big favorites, I mean, it doesn't get much better for Jonathan Taylor. You know, he had a really good matchup last week against a bad Vikings defense, and now he gets to face the Jets at home. I mean, Jonathan Taylor once again looks like a really strong play. So Zeke I like, Jonathan Taylor I like. But these 6K range guys, like, this is where I'm really finding some strong options. I mean, you got Nick Chubb coming off a big game against the Bengals. Now he gets to face Washington, a team that actually has a really good front. Uh, you know, I expect them to actually be pretty good against the run this season with how good their defensive line is. But 6,900 for Nick Chubb still does feel like a little bit too cheap here as big home favorites. Austin Eckler, though, you know, he's the guy that really stands out to me first look at home against the Panthers. Looked really good last week. You know, after a disappointing week one against the Bengals, getting Justin Herbert at quarterback seemed to have helped Austin Eckler. He got 20 touches, was really involved in the passing game, was involved a lot more than we saw in week one. Uh, got four targets, four catches for 55 yards. Also got 16 carries for 93 uh, for 93 yards. Now he gets one of the best possible matchups this week. Uh, the Panthers last season, one of the worst teams defensively against the run. And I don't think much is going to change this season. So at 6,800, especially on DraftKings with it being full PPR scoring, you know, getting a point per reception with how much Austin Eckler is involved in the passing game with Justin Herbert seeming to now be their starter. You know, that thing, I think that could help Eckler, you know, in the long run. seems like Herbert's going to throw more to the running back than Tyrod Taylor did or than Tyrod Taylor will. So I really like Eckler here against the Panthers. You know, once I saw the Chargers were playing the Panthers, I knew I was going to have interest in Eckler. And I, he's not that expensive either. You know, 6800 on DK looks like a really good price. He's really nicely priced on Yahoo as well. If you look at their running back pricing, he's coming in all the way down here at just $23. You know, same price as Kenyon Drake, only a dollar more than Joe Mixon, only a dollar more than Chris Carson. Like, I definitely like Eckler over on Yahoo as well. And although, you know, Yahoo isn't full PPR scoring, Eckler still going to be involved in, you know, the running game as well. Still has touchdown equity. You know, if they get down to the goal line, Eckler... Probably going to be the guy that they used to punch it in. You know, they did give a ton of carries to Josh uh, to Josh Kelly. I think he got like uh, 25 carries last game, if I'm not mistaken, or something close to that. Kelly got, uh, yeah, 23 carries, two receptions as well. So, I mean, Kelly was heavily involved. They just ran the ball a ton. Eckler got 20 touches. Kelly got 25 touches. 
you know, for me, I want to play Eckler just because I feel like he's the highest upside guy. He's the guy that's most not or most games is going to get the more touch get get the most touches between the two. He's their starting running back, so you could play Kelly, but I prefer Eckler. You know, he's just the guy I feel most confident in. But it's clear they want to run the ball. I expect Eckler to probably get 20 to 25 touches. He's going to be involved in the passing game. It's a fantastic matchup. I really like him this week. I think he's one of the guys that really stands out at running back when I just kind of skim through the position. Uh, then another guy that really stood out to me was Miles Sanders, 6,400 on DraftKings, coming off a big game. You know, his first game back from injury, everyone was a little bit hesitant to go to Sanders just because we weren't sure what the workload was going to look like. Well, it seemed like he wasn't going to be limited, you know, at least heading into that game. They they weren't planning on limit, limiting him. He got 20 carries for 95 yards, also got three receptions, was targeted seven times. I mean, Sanders, he's going to be a workhorse back this year, and it seems like he's fully healthy now. Given he got 23 touches in his first game back, you would only assume that his workload increases here in their second game. Another guy that's very involved in the passing game. It's a great matchup against a bad Bengals defense, You know, a Bengals team that was incredibly bad against the run last season towards the bottom of the league. I mean, when I just looked at running backs, Sanders and Eckler were the two guys in the 6K range that just really stood out. I thought both of them were way too cheap for their matchup, especially Sanders. I mean, Sanders at 6,400 is a big discount. You know, he's way too cheap on DraftKings this week, just in my opinion. If you're playing cash games, he's probably going to be someone you want to build around this week. You know, there's a lot of strong plays at running back, but I really like Sanders. I really like Eckler. Sanders is also way too cheap on Yahoo. He's only $21 over here. Same price as Todd Gurley. Like, I would prefer Sanders all day over Todd Gurley. In the end, Sanders is, you know, he's going to be a workhorse back for the Eagles. I thought they were going to limit him a bit, you know, in his first game back, but that was not the case with him getting 23 touches. I think he played about 80% of the snaps as well. Looks like he's going to be, you know, we're going to start seeing that workhorse role heading into week three as well. You know, it started week two in his first game back, and I would only expect, you know, his touches to probably increase heading into this game. Probably going to get 20 carries, probably going to get four or five targets as well, if not more. Fantastic matchup. Pretty much all the boxes are checked for Austin Eckler this week, or for, uh, for Miles Sanders this week. For Austin Eckler, they're checked as well. Price tag's pretty low on both guys. So really, those are the two uh, that stood out to me in the 6K range. Now, there's some guys here that have upside for tournaments, but I mainly want to try and stick to, you know, cash game constructing, optimal plays, the guys I feel most confident in heading into the week. Uh, now, we do have some value here at the position with so many injuries. So Deion Lewis was pretty much the direct backup for Saquon Barkley last week. I know Wayne Gallman is still on the roster, but he was inactive. I would assume he's going to be active this week if he's healthy. You know, I assume that I think he was just a healthy scratch. I would assume he'd play this week, but Deion Lewis did get 10 carries for 20 yards and you know, wasn't very efficient, but he did get five targets. We know Deion Lewis is involved in the passing game. You know, it's not a good matchup against the 49ers, but I guess he could be viable at 5,300, but I would feel much better uh, in Jarrett McKinnon. I think McKinnon is the guy that's really standing out, you know, early on in the week. We did already get news that both Raheem Mostert and Tevin Coleman are unlikely to play this week. So right now that leaves Jared McKinnon as the last standing back for the, for the 49ers. I'm sure they're probably going to sign somebody, you know, throughout the week or they're going to at least like, you know, maybe call someone up from the practice squad. I doubt McKinnon is going to only, you know, I doubt he's going to be their only healthy running back heading into this game. But right now he looks like the clear starter. Did get some, you know, didn't get a ton of volume last week, but he was very efficient. You know, he had three carries, 77 yards, broke off a long run for a touchdown. Uh, this is a guy that when he gets touches has shown a lot of upside. He's, you know, a guy that can catch passes as well, will be involved in the passing game. And if he's going to be, you know, their workhorse back, which I would assume is the case, let's pull up San Francisco, their running backs real quick, just so you guys can see. So Raheem Moster is doubtful, unlikely to play. Uh, Tevin Coleman is doubtful, unlikely to play. Jeff Wilson hasn't played so far this year, or he's barely played, got two touches last week. Obviously, he's going to be, you know, active and in, in the, you know, in the rotation, the running back committee so far, or so far in this game, but you have to assume that McKinnon is going to be the starter, going to get, you know, probably 60, 70 percent of the running back touches. I'm sure Jeff Wilson will be involved, but I think McKinnon is the guy we want to target here. You know, he's not like 3K, you know, like he maybe would have been last year. DraftKings did make the running back, you know, did adjust the running back pricing. So running backs aren't nearly as cheap. You know, we're not getting 3K value running backs like we did last year. But even 4,900 for McKinnon, you could argue is still a little bit too cheap, especially because he has a, you know, big play upside, incredibly fast, uh, really explosive. 
great running back out of the backfield, you know, can catch passes, like I said. It's a really good matchup against the Giants. We know the 49ers want to run the ball as well. You know, they're a run-heavy team. I really like Jared McKinnon this week. I think he's a clear value at the running back position. You know, you don't have to go with him, with him being 4,900. You know, if he was 3K, I think he would be just the lock and load, slam dunk value play. At 4,900, he's not a must, but I still think he's a really strong option. You know, if you wanted to, I guess you could, like, go Eckler, Sanders, and then maybe a guy like Jonathan Taylor or go Eckler, Sanders, Zeke, or Eckler, Sanders, Cook. But for now, you know, I like a lot of the 6K receivers that we'll talk about. And if I, w- if I want to get those 6K receivers in, I'm going to have to go a little bit cheaper in my flex. I normally try and play, you know, three running backs in cash games, and that's the route I'll probably be going this week. Uh, so I definitely like McKinnon as an RB3 flex play. You know, you could always go with four receivers, but me personally, I prefer to go, you know, with uh, with uh, three running backs in cash just because we're really locking in the, you know, the touches. Eckler should get at least 20 touches. Sanders should get at least 20 touches, and assuming the 49ers don't sign a a bunch of guys and it's just like McKinnon and Wilson, I mean, you have to assume McKinnon gets at least probably 15, 18 touches, if not more, and all these guys will be involved in the passing game, so that's where I'm kind of approaching running back this week, you know, just my first look at the position. I'm sure I skipped over some guys that you may like, you know, if you have any guys you want my opinion on, you can always comment them down below. I I do try and, uh, you know, reply to every comment. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and move on to receiver. Uh, lastly, though, before we hit on receiver, you know, McKinnon, I think he looks really good on Yahoo as well. He's only coming in at $14, you know, another cheap value play. A guy you can go ahead and plug in in the flex spot. Very similar, you know, if you don't want to go with McKinnon, you don't have to. You could always play, you know, three running backs in the mid-range or in the upper mid-range. You could go with Jonathan Taylor at 27 as your flex. You could go with Dalvin Cook at 29. But like I said, you know, there's a lot of mid-range receivers I also like. And if I want to get those in, you know, I got to go a little bit cheaper in my flex spot. So moving on to receiver now, I do want to start off uh, over on Yahoo. So their pricing already, you know, it's pretty soft. You can pretty much fit in, you know, really, I don't want to say like whoever you want, but man, their pricing is so soft. You can get a lot of good mid-range plays in. You see, you know, we plug in uh, Wilson, Eckler, Sanders, and McKinnon. That still leaves us an average of $21 remaining per player. And yet, you know, we haven't plugged in a cheap defense. I'll go ahead and do that real quick. Normally, you know, defense for me, I just kind of play whatever defense fits in my lineup. For now, you know, I'm just going to plug in a cheap home defense that I see. You know, I guess we could go with the Vikings at 2500 but their defense has been so bad. You know, the Raiders at 2300 don't look too bad against the Patriots. We'll just plug them in for now. You know, Cam will turn the ball over. He'll take some sacks, although he's looked really good this year. You know, I think the Raiders are a fine punt option just for now. Yahoo, though, I did want to mention the Bucks defense. You know, their minimum salary on Yahoo, I think that they're like the clear value defense this week. When I just skimmed through the defense position, they were the team that really stood out to me. We know Denver is going to be without a ton of guys this week. Uh, no Cortland Sutton out for the year. Drew Locke's going to be out. Uh, so it's going to be Dr- Jeff Driscoll starting at quarterback for the for the Broncos this week. I mean, sign me up for the Bucks defense at only $10. Their defense has looked really good this year. I think they're a clear value on Yahoo. You just look at the pricing. You know the Buccaneers are thirty-seven hundred. They're the uh, fifth most expensive defense on DraftKings, and then on Yahoo, their minimum salary and literally ch- the cheapest defense on the board. You know, tied for the cheapest defense on the board. So I like the Bucks defense a lot on Yahoo. I think they really stand out. You know, DraftKings. I just kind of threw in one that fit the Raiders twenty-three hundred. They fit with the lineup build that I you know built out before I started recording. So let's look at receiver now. Want to start off at Yahoo? Like I said, you plug in the Raider or the Bucks defense at ten dollars. That gets you up to twenty-four dollars remaining per player. So we have some salary to work with. We're going to be able to pay up a receiver and still get in some good mid-range options in this like twenty-five, twenty-dollar range. And if I'm going to pay up at receiver this week, for me, I think DeAndre Hopkins is the guy I want to go to just because his floor is so high right now. Uh, getting massive volume, sixteen targets week one in a tough matchup against the 49ers, nine targets last week against Washington, eight catches, 68 yards, and a touchdown. Like, It seems like Hopkins is going to be poised for a massive season. It looks like he's going to be Kyler Murray's go-to guy this year. I like the matchup a lot against the Lions. Nobody in their secondary is going to be able to slow down Hopkins. They don't have Darius Slay anymore. Their defense overall is just not good at all. This game has a really high total, uh, 54.5 total. Like, All the boxes are checked for Hopkins. You know, He's the guy I like most that stands out to me on Yahoo if I'm paying up a receiver, which is pretty easy to do. You plug in Hopkins and you still got $20 remaining per player for two wide receiver spots and a tight end spot. And normally, uh, tight end is a position I do like to go cheap at, which you know I like a cheap option once again. So I like Hopkins quite a bit. 
you know, you do have Devontae Adams in the Sunday night game that you could play. I mean, Adams, he didn't have a good game at all last week, but I would expect a bounce back game from him. You know, it is a tough matchup against a good Saints defense. I assume Lattimore will probably shadow Adams, but Adams is going to get massive volume. You know, another high total game, 51 and a half total. Sure, you could play Adams, but with him being questionable, right now as I'm recording this video Monday night, I'll just go ahead and plug in Hopkins for now. But let's fill out these receiver spots, talk about some receivers that stand out to me this week. Obviously, it's going to be tough to pay up for Hopkins on DraftKings. We just don't have the salary. So we're going to have to look to this mid-range, and you know, there are some really strong plays in this mid-range. Starting off, you know, these uh, the Dallas and Seattle receivers, you know, just in this game in general, looked really cheap. You got Amari Cooper for 6,500. DK Metcalf also 6,500. Tyler Lockett only 6,400. And if we scroll down, um, you have let me see if I can find him. You know, I think he's way down here. You got Michael Gallup for 5,500. CD Lamb for 5,400. Like the receivers in this Dallas Seattle game really stand out to me early on in the week. Right now, this game, like I said, does have I believe the highest total on the slate. Should be a high-scoring game, has a lot of shootout potential. Since we played Russell Wilson, I don't mind stacking him with one of his receivers. You know, if you want to go Metcalf or Lockett, you really can't go wrong with either one. You know, both guys should be locked in for probably 8 to 10 targets. Metcalf, 14 targets through two weeks. Uh, Tyler Lockett, 16 targets through two weeks. You know, I think Lockett's probably the safer guy in terms of cash. You know, I think Metcalf probably gives you a higher ceiling, has a little bit, you know, has more big play upside. But if we're looking for a guy that's probably going to get 8 to 10 targets, I think Tyler Lockett is our guy, 6,400. He really stands out. Easily can pair him with Russell Wilson this week and still get in really good options around our lineup. So I like Lockett at 6,400 to pair with Wilson. He's also really cheap on Yahoo, uh, coming in at just $22. Really looks good over there. You can pair him up with Russell Wilson on Yahoo pretty easily. Still get in some good, uh, good guys around the rest of your lineup. So... I like doing that, and then, you know, you don't have to correlate your lineups in cash, but I think running it back does give you some upside. I do want to have, you know, a lot of exposure to this game just because I think this game has a ton of shootout potential as a game we're going to want to get exposure to. And Amari Cooper, you know, he's only 6,500 this week, getting massive volume so far, 14 targets week one, nine targets week two. I mean, he's clearly the number one receiver for the Cowboys. You know, this offense is so explosive. Should be a team that puts up a ton of points every week. And in this game, that is likely to shoot out. I really like Cooper at 6,500. You know, he'll probably be matched up with... Honestly, I can't remember who Seattle's outside cornerback is. I think it might be Dunbar. I know they had some guys get hurt in their uh, Sunday night game. I don't know if they'll be able to play this week. That will be something we have to monitor. But, I mean, I'm not really too worried about matchup here, especially in, like, a high total game. You know, you should expect Cooper to get massive volume, you know, even in a tough matchup week one against the Rams and against Jalen Ramsey. Still got 14 targets, still had 18 DraftKings points. Like, if he gets into the end zone one of these games, like, he's going to put up a massive game. Cooper has 25, 30-point upside. He's the highest upside receiver for the Cowboys, in my opinion. He's also the safest receiver. I just feel like his target floor is so high compared to CeeDee Lamb and compared to Michael Gallup, so... You know, if you want to run it back, you can. I, I like doing that. You know, I don't usually in cash games, I don't go out of my way to run it back or I don't go out of my way to stack in general. But when it's a high total game like this with a 55 total, you're going to want to get exposure to it in cash games. So we can plug in Amari Cooper as our, you know, wide receiver two. And that leaves us 4,700 left for our wide receiver three and our tight end, which we can easily work around. I do like Cooper on Yahoo as well. He's also just feels a little bit too cheap there coming in at $25, you know, not as cheap as like DraftKings. I mean, you look, you got Metcalf a dollar less, Adam Thielen's a dollar less, you know, Allen Robinson's in a great spot against the Falcons. He's a dollar less. But since we stacked up Russell Wilson and Tyler Lockett, we'll get that part uh, positive correlation and run it back with Amari Cooper at uh, $25. So before we fill out, fill out that last tight end spot on Yahoo, let's talk, uh, talk about where we can go at wide receiver three for DraftKings. So you know, obviously, we're not going to be able to play anyone else in the 6K range, but there are some good options this week. Like Allen Robinson, I said, you know, against the Falcons, I like him a lot for tournaments this week. Uh, Keaton Allen, 6,100 against the Panthers. He had a bounce back game in week two, really benefited with Justin Herbert, at quarterback. If Herbert starts again, I think that's a boost for Allen and his upside. No one in this Panthers secondary is going to slow him down. I mean, the Panthers might have the worst secondary in the NFL this season. So, you know, Keenan Allen looks really good at 6,100. Definitely someone you could target. Terry McLaurin's been awesome this season. You could go to him at 5,900. But my guy this week right now, you know, at least early on in the week, T.Y. Hilton really stands out to me on DraftKings. He's only 5,600. It's a fantastic matchup against the Jets. And we do already know that Paris Campbell 
going to be out this game for the Colts. So the Colts are going to be pretty thin at receiver. They're obviously already missing Marlon Mack, but now Paris Campbell is also going to be out. So we take a look at their receivers. It's going to be behind T.Y. Hilton. It's going to be Zach Pascal, uh, Michael Pittman Jr., and then you know just a mixture of some no-name guys like Ashton. Du- like I don't even know who these guys are. Reese Fountain, uh, Desmond Patman. I-, I honestly haven't heard of it, these guys ever in my life. So it's pretty much going to be Pascal, H- uh, Hilton, and Michael Pittman getting all the looks from Phillip Rivers. I know T.Y. Hilton's been disappointing so far this season, you know, disappointing game week one, just uh, four catches for 53 yards and a really good matchup against Jacksonville. I thought he was in a smash spot last week against Minnesota. I was way overweight on him in tournaments, and he really disappointed with just three catches for 28 yards. Now without Paris Campbell, I mean, you'd have to assume T.Y. Hilton, his target floor is just even higher. I have to assume he gets at least six to eight targets this week. I know the Colts are big favorites, but they should still throw the ball, you know, a decent amount in this game. Hilton should be able to torch this Jets secondary. The Jets are not good at all. Their defense is terrible. I really like T.Y. Hilton. He's at home as well, which is a big boost. You know, anytime T.Y. Uh, T.Y. Hilton is at home, I always have interest in him because he always, you know, plays better at home in the Dome. 5,600, you know, I don't know if he's going to be like a cash game guy, but I'm fine plugging him in for now. I think he just has so much upside. T.Y. Hilton is someone I'm going to be overweight on once again. You know, maybe as the week goes on, he won't be in my cash game lineup. But for now, you know, uh, tournament-wise, I'm going to be way overweight on him in tournaments. And I think he's fine to plug in, you know, at least early on in the week as a cash game guy for 5,600. Because I think his target floor does increase with uh, with Paris Campbell now out. But who was getting a good amount of volume. Uh, we'll take a look at Campbell's targets just real quick so you guys can see. Uh, week one, got good volume, nine targets. Obviously, he got hurt last week. But, you know, without him... Should free up more targets for T.Y. Hilton, you would have to assume. So I do like him in a really good matchup. Feels a little bit too cheap. You know, we talked about Michael Gallup, 5,500 you could look to. Uh, Deontay Johnson, his target floor is just so high right now. Uh, 10 in week one, 13 in week two. Literally double-digit targets in every game so far. He's clearly the number two receiver behind Juju. But, you know, Big Ben's going to get his guys the ball. You know, I assume Johnson has to get, you know, probably eight to ten targets once again. Really good matchup against a pretty bad Houston secondary. You know, if you want to go Deontay Johnson, I don't think he's a bad play at all. He was really popular uh, popular last week, but that was because he was so cheap. At 5,400 now, I don't think he's going to be as popular, but still looks like a strong play. C.D. Lamb as well, good volume last week, uh, nine targets, six catches, 106 yards. I mean, C.D. Lamb in a high total game that you expect to be a shootout, you could obviously look to go to him as well. I mean, there's just a lot of good plays in this 5K range, too. Like, even, you know, if A.J. Brown misses, which it looks like he's going to be out again, uh, he's going to be out, I think, a couple weeks, then Corey Davis had a pretty good game last week without A.J. Brown. Didn't get a ton of targets, but found the end zone. 12 drafting points. Really good matchup against the Vikings. A bad secondary, a young secondary. Definitely have interest in Corey Davis. I mean, Robbie Anderson, like, he's just been so good so far with the Panthers. High volume in targets, 18 targets through two weeks. Over 20 drafting points in both games. You know, it's a tough matchup and it's a good Chargers secondary, but Carolina probably going to be playing from behind this game. You know, game script would probably, you know, favor Robbie Anderson here. So another guy you could look to, but that's kind of it for receiver. You know, there's some cheap options here, but, you know, as you can see, we kind of already filled out our bill. We don't need to talk too much about these cheap guys. You know, I'll definitely hit on some value plays in my full breakdown video, which will be going up uh, Tuesday morning, or excuse me, Friday morning. So be sure to check out my full breakdown uh, where I'll talk about every guy, or all the guys I like at each position, you know, top tier, mid range, and value plays. For now, we're just gonna try and hit on the guys that you know kind of fit with our lineup. So we'll run through tight end real quick. Obviously, we can't pay up here. We're gonna have to go cheap. Normally, tight end's always a position I look to go cheap at. Kittle is questionable, but it seems like he might play this week. We'll have to keep an eye there. You know, Tyler Higby's coming off a big game, but it's a tough matchup against the Bills. I don't really see myself paying up at tight end this week for cash, like. Rarely do I pay up for tight end in general in cash games. I usually try and go cheap here, and we have some good cheap options. Guys that should get, you know, eight, probably six to eight targets, and they're way, you know, they're under 4K. You know, in the 4K range, you got some viable options though here. Like Hayden Hurst finally had a big game last week. I liked him a lot last week. Not the best spot against the Bears, but 4,700, you could definitely go to Hayden Hurst. You know, Jordan Reed, if, uh, if George Kittle were to sit, he had a big game last week without uh, George Kittle. He's only 4K, you know, got good volume, eight targets, seven catches, 50 yards, two touchdowns, just looked rejuvenated, uh, looked like his old self, good matchup against the Giants. So he's another guy you could consider. Mo Alley-Cox without Jack Doyle, you know, he got six targets, 
I don't feel great about Mo Cox at 3,800, but he could be viable. Uh, but I really like Logan Thomas, man. I mean, Logan Thomas has been someone that I've been playing pretty much. I played him week one. I'm gonna, I played him again week two, and I'm probably going to play him again in week three. You know, the production hasn't been great, but the targets have been there. Eight targets week one, nine targets week two, playing a ton of snaps, running a ton of routes. Really good matchup as well against the Browns. Uh, the Browns have really struggled against tight ends so far. Uh, they really struggled against the uh, – forgot who they played, the Bengals. We saw uh, whenever um, – forgot who the Bengals tight end is, uh, C.J. Ozama, whenever Uzama got hurt in that game, uh, Drew Sample just started, you know, g- catching a ton of balls, even Uzama had a good game uh, against Cleveland last week, and then I think in week one, I can't remember who Cleveland played, oh yeah, they played the, uh, Cleveland played the Ravens week one, and we saw Mark Andrews have a big game, I mean, you just date back to like a, a few seasons ago, like the Browns were one of the worst teams defensively against tight ends, you know, two years ago, and even last season they struggled, this has always been a team that's struggled against tight ends, and now we get Logan Thomas here for just 3,700 in a game where the uh, Washington's going to probably be playing from behind and have to throw guys locked in for six to eight targets a week, running a ton of routes, playing a ton of snaps. I mean, really not much more you can like for 3,700. As a cash game tight end, I think he really stands out as a cheap guy that just gives us upside and gives us a high target floor. That's what we want in cash games. It's also a good matchup, positive game script. I really like Logan Thomas to fill out our build for 3700 Now on Yahoo, we can't get to him in our build because uh, he is $15. He's a dollar more than you know what we have left. So we only have $14 left. You do have Jordan Reed, who you could play here, you know, if um if George Kittle winds up out, you know, Mo Ali Cox you have for $12. But Evan Ingram was someone that stood out to me on Yahoo. I know it's not a good matchup against the 49ers, but he's only $14. I mean Evan Ingram's one of the best tight ends in the league, in my opinion. Why is he $14? I don't really understand. Give us Gives us a very high target floor, even though it's a tough matchup. For $14, like, I would definitely play, you know, if, if, if Evan Ingram was 4K on DraftKings, like, I would be playing him. I would play him over Jordan Reed, but he's not 4K on DraftKings. He is, let me see, where's Evan Ingram? Yeah, he's, he's 5K, so, you know, not as cheap there, but 14 bucks on Yahoo. Like, he's actually one of the cheapest tight ends we have on Yahoo. I know it's a tough spot, but man, Evan Ingram, just too cheap on Yahoo, gives us such a high target floor. We know he's one of the you know top go-to receivers from the Giants. I'm pretty sure they do have some injuries as well. I think Sterling Shepard might have got injured last game. I can't honestly remember. Yeah, it looks like he's questionable. He has he has to have an MRI on his toe, could miss some time. I think Golden Tate, you know, he didn't get injured, but Slayton's still healthy as well, so there's a chance Sterling Shepard could miss this game, which would just free up even more targets, would make me feel even better about Evan Ingram. So I do like him a lot at $14 on Yahoo. So this is kind of the first look build for now, guys. Just an early look lineup. You know, when I enter my contest, uh, you know, probably Friday night, that's usually when I go and enter my contest. This will be the lineup that I throw in for now. I'm obviously going to make some adjustments, though. You know, this is not going to be the lineup that I play. But for now, this looks like a pretty good first look lineup. You know, just kind of wanted to talk through my process of how I go about building out my lineups, what I look for in terms of, you know, quarterbacks that have upside, that, you know, have maybe some rushing upside, running backs that are going to get a lot of touches, receivers that are going to get a lot of targets, you know, tight ends that are going to get good targets as well. I think we kind of covered all those boxes, you know, at each position. Obviously, you know, our quarterbacks – High upside quarterback with Russell Wilson. Both Eckler and Sanders should probably get 20 touches. With all the injuries to the 49ers backfield, I think Jared McKinnon should get a lot of volume this week in a good matchup. And then we have, you know, Lockett, Cooper, and a high-scoring shootout game. You know, both guys are locked in for 8 to 10 targets a week. T.Y. Hilton might be a little bit risky with how poorly he's played so far, but I love his upside against the Jets. No Paris Campbell makes me feel a little bit better about Hilton this week. He's also really cheap at 5,600. And then Logan Thomas... Just a cheap tight end that's getting good volume every week and good matchup against the Browns. So that's kind of my thought process there. Defense, I just really threw in whatever defense fit. You know, that's normally how I play defense, honestly. You know, I don't dive too deep into the defense position. Now on Yahoo, I think, you know, the uh, the Buccaneers were just a clear standout team for me. DraftKings, though, I just kind of threw in the Raiders just because they fit with the build. But yeah, guys, I think that's our first look breakdown for this week, you know, like I said, I don't give out these lineups for you guys to play. You know, these are just my first looks at the slate. I won't be playing this lineup. As the week goes on, news is going to come out. We're going to have to make adjustments. You know, I'll be able to dig deeper into the slate as the week goes on. I will have my full breakdown on Friday morning. You know, that'll be posted on YouTube. So be sure to check that out. If you do enjoy these videos, be sure to hit that like button as well. Hit the subscribe button before we get out of here. 
and be sure to click that notification bell so that way uh, you do get notified every time I upload and you'll never miss out on any of my new videos. But yeah, guys, I think we covered it all. I know this video is pretty long, but I do appreciate you sticking through it all, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and we will see you in the next video. Peace.